What happens when an electric vehicle spontaneously combusts at a charging station while it's topping off on electrons? Does that change how the fire department responds? You found stashed. I'm Pat, firefighter, mechanical engineer, and battery guy. A few weeks ago, there was a fire at an Electrify America charging station in Statesville, North Carolina. When fire crews got on scene, they had one major problem. There was no way to shut off the electricity. And this is a big deal when you're trying to put water on something because usually putting water on high voltage, it's not really a great idea. In this case, their dispatch reached out to Duke Energy and Electrify America six different times. An hour after the fire crews arrived, there was still no way to shut things down. They couldn't even get a reasonable ETA from the power company, which honestly, it's not much of a surprise. So let's take a look at what's actually out there and why this has to change. The fire department's always concerned if there's something on fire and it involves electricity. And that's no different with this. There's big power in these things. Now this is DC power. And the nice thing to know is inside this charging cord, it should be dead as I'm holding it right now. Because when you look at the lugs, there is power, there is ground, but there's communication lines. And what this has to do is actually connect to the vehicle. There's a handshake between the vehicle and the charger before there's actually power in this cable right here. And that's important to know. Now, while this should be dead, always treat it as there's live power in this line right here. Unfortunately, in this case, there's no way for me to know how to disconnect power to this entire unit. I don't know where the main switch gear is. It's somewhere inside of this large building. And that's pretty common with a lot of these units. One solution for this would be an emergency stop button, but another solution would be a clearly marked switch gear. And this has been a thing at gas stations for years, an e-stop button, because if there's an emergency, you need to be able to stop the flow of fuel. Now that e-stop can't be right here where the emergency is taking place. Per code, it has to be at least 20 feet away, but no more than 100 feet away. And at this gas station, it's right here there are some charging stations that have a way to disconnect them, and it might not be obvious. As we move this direction, you can see the control cabinets, those giant white cabinets, and then all the main power is just right around the corner. And as I swing around, you can see there's this little knife switch. This knife switch is the emergency shutoff for those charging pedestals. Typically what you'll see at a charging station starts off with a large transformer. This is taking about 7,600 volts and it's bringing it down to 480 volts, three phase power. From here, you're gonna go to some type of disconnect or switch gear system, which is over here in this case. Now for this, the fire department could shut off the charging station right here and it makes it really easy. But again, this isn't gonna be outside all the time. Sometimes it'll be inside of the building, not this convenient. Unfortunately, this is really too close to the hazard because if we swing right over here, this is where the charging stations are. And in this case, the control cabinet for the charging station is actually in the pedestal itself. So all the electronics are in here. Sometimes you'll have a separate control cabinet and this will just be a pedestal. This is another case where this charging station actually does have an emergency stop button. And you can see that right here. But like I mentioned before, this is way too close to the hazard. If we've got a vehicle on fire here, if this charging station is on fire right here, this e-stop doesn't do me any good as a first responder. This is an area where Tesla does a really good job. You can see all the charging pedestals for the superchargers. And then when we move over, you can see a white control cabinet. You'll see this set up for every supercharger. And they have an emergency response guide on their website for first responders. Sometimes you might be at a supercharger location and not be able to find this white cabinet. In that case, look around. It might be hidden behind some privacy fencing. When it comes to EV charging stations, it's still the Wild West. We need real change. We need the companies operating these stations to take ownership, develop emergency action plans, and stop pretending that these fires don't happen. Thankfully, there are updates coming to the codes. Right now, proposals are on the table that would require EV charging stations to have disconnects and clearly marked emergency stop buttons. The idea is to bring them more in line with what the fuel pump standards have been for decades. Unfortunately, those changes won't happen overnight. State and local municipalities have to adopt these changes, and there's a real lag there. Realistically, most places, they probably won't adopt requirements like this until 2030. So until then, it's up to the installers and operators of these stations to step up, do the right thing, and make sure their installations are safe.